Hello guys and welcome back to the Lear Performance YouTube channel. Last time we had the car out for more testing and we were experiencing some serious clutch slip. So now it's time to address that. Unfortunately this meant stripping off quite a lot of the modifications we'd just done. Putting us a little bit in the back foot. But it was going to be totally worth it. Because we were also sticking on the hybrid turbo that we had on our last development car. Just because we had everything out we had easy access. Currently the gearbox is in place and with a bit of movie magic it's suddenly going to be out and the reason there's movie magic is because this is quite heavy and going to take a few hands. For the clutch we decided to take a risk and try out the Uniclutch Sport now this might not be the perfect solution for the track considering this is for fast road use but the design intrigued me this is a one size fits all clutch how is that even possible well it's all done by certain fitting kits and by plowing all their resources into the one clutch designs they can make a super refined product for virtually any vehicle these are twin plate designs that also have a patented dampening technology which means that the clutch pedal feel feels just like stock which is absolutely fantastic for when you want to get through the gears quick. The install was actually really easy, it was just a case of following the instructions and once that was out of the way we could get cracking with the turbo, the part that will make us some serious power. Because I'd went and booked another track day within a couple of days, we had to check the brakes, get the pads swapped out for new ones, as well as get the car aligned and do a general check over. So we've got the uni clutch all installed, but now I need to go and try and do like 500 kilometers worth of driving to bed it in. I need to be on the dyno in a few hours. So I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work, but I'm gonna give my best shot anyway. So with a couple of days of non-stop driving, I managed to rack up the miles, so it was time to hit the dyno and see what power we could make. After a fair bit of mapping time, I was able to create over 440 horsepower, but I decided for the sake of the safety of the car, I would dial it back because it looked like we were running out of fuel. But that would be enough for now, just so that we could try out the clutch at the track this would be our last shakedown before the Ford event at Knock Hill. The only real issue we had now is it was absolutely bucketing down. But we'd still give it a good go. So first run out was quite good. It seemed like everything was going pretty straightforward, the clutch was gripping. We were getting where we needed to be with it, the car feels a lot faster, so God knows how long that's been kind of slipping for. So it's time to go out and try and push a wee bit harder and see how we go on, but it is still pretty wet. As the day went on the track get drier and it was time to put on the semi slicks and as soon as you do that naturally you get to have some sliding fun. The turbo was certainly a lot to handle, it was so much quicker up the straights and just generally quicker all round. So what we decided to do 
was we were going to swap out the clutch with the most hardcore uni clutch version to see what it was like. We tested this one and now it was time to test the new one. So that meant gearbox out again and new clutch back in. Right, so this is a totally different design for the other one that we've got. Hmm. Well, it's, it's, it's not totally different. It's just got less of the dampening stuff yeah, inside yeah. it. But this one is specifically for track use. Yeah, well. ah. yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Looks very good. Let's see how it handles it. While shooting this section of the video, I've come to realise that I didn't actually shoot it with any of my microphones switched on. So here you have me talking to a camera and you can't hear it. But I'm explaining that we're actually going to fit our wide arch kit now and how we were going to do it. So we were hoping that we could have these spaced out a little bit further, but due to some time constraints and a couple of technical issues, it just wasn't going to happen. So we are just going to have to put them on and hope for the best at this point. So fingers crossed it's all going to work out for us. You can see how far out the wheels sit. So we were just hoping that the arches were going to be wide enough that they could actually come out. That once we add camber, it might clear it, especially if we modify the wide arch kit just a little bit. And now it was time to make the irreversible step. It was time to cut the arches. But not only did we have the actual arches to cut themselves, we had to actually modify the SS tuning extensions simply because we didn't want the wheels actually hitting the insides.
The next day, once the bond had all set, we could take off all the tape, file the wheels back on, and that was us, more or less, ready to go, we could run the big slicks now. All that was left to do now, was give it a bit of a clean up, as best we could, get some vinyls on it so that people knew who the car was from, and then we could take it to Ford Life and have some fun on the proper slicks. So join us in the next video, where we take on Ford Live in the Mark IV.